Look, tell me. Yeah, what's up? Uh, gonna check this thing out. Bro, come on over. What's up, man? You did not. Uh, bro. What do you swipe it? Right. You swipe it left. Oh, bro. She's cracking. Swipe it right. Eh? Bro. I was doing it today. Eh? She replied, let's just hang out my house. Watch some thing for Netflix or chill or something. What does that mean, bro? I saw my man, you ain't got good gun, eh? You got a buck, bro. Much has changed in our lives since the introduction of the mobile phone, and we seem to be growing more and more attached to them every day. According to MobileStatistics.com, a recent study by MobileInsurance.com has revealed that the average person spends 90 minutes a day on their phone. That figure may not sound like a lot, but that amounts up to 23 days a year, and 3.9 years of the average person's life is spent staring at their phone screen. According to a recent study, 29% of mobile users say their devices is the first and last thing they look at at night. With the average mobile user having such a large vested interest in their phones, it became extremely obvious why huge amounts of money is being invested in the continued development of apps and mobile devices. And it did not come as a huge surprise when the already massive industry of online dating penetrated this market with ease. Mobile dating began to take shape in 2003 with proxy dating, but did not take off until 2007 when the first smartphones started to become publicly available. But the industry really started to grow in 2010. It was not long after the iPhone and Android system were released that online dating websites started to create apps for both the Android and iPhone markets, and it went off with a massive boom. Now there is currently 259 apps with a simple search of dating in the Android Play Store. According to Blossfields and Schmitz, it is estimated the industry is valued at roughly 4 billion US dollars worldwide, and is still growing at a very fast rate. By the year 2012, mobile dating apps had overtaken online dating apps as the preferred method to online date. Mark Brooks, editor-in-chief of Online Personal Watch, claims Top-tier dating sites are seeing 40-60% to 60 of their logins on mobile. According to RSVP, 51% of Australians used online dating whilst Roth and Gills estimated through their research and reports that one in five couples meet through online dating and is the second most common way for couples to meet. 90% of meet. consumers start a task on one device and finish it on another. So it is imperative for app development to work seamlessly across all platforms. Online daters have found that apps are easier to navigate and access at any time they want. Users often prefer using them due to the nature of our busy lives, which does not always allow us to sit at a computer and start a relationship. But with the ease of mobiles, users can just quickly send a message, photo, video at any time. You may be asking, why do people need so many different apps if they're just looking for a date? Well, that's where you're mistaken. People are actually looking for all kinds of things, from just sex, maybe marriage, or even relationship with someone of the same religion and every other weird and twisted thing you can think of that comes in between. So it can be said that individuals have completely different reasons for using online dating apps and so we must cater to everyone by making all kinds of apps for all kinds of people. The standard category are defined as websites or apps that don't specialize and are made for the masses. Within these online dating services, users create a profile that gives basic details about yourself to other users and gives some insight into what type of a person you are. In these sites and apps, the attracted male or female will generally speak to each other via chat and set up video dates and if successful, possibly a real date. Generally, people using these sorts of sites are more likely to be looking for a relationship and not just a quick fling a part of an older demographic. A few sites and apps I include in this category would be eHarmony, Badu, ISVP, Match.com. The specific group I define as apps that are specialised, comprised of users who are searching for a certain type of person, or have some sort of fetish they wish to explore through the crazy world of app dating. These specific demographics can include, but not limited to, two, ethnicity, religion, race, skin colour, sexual preferences, age, weight, hair colour, height, dog preference, and the list goes on. Pretty much any demographic or weird twisted desire 
a user wishes to seek out being available by one of the hundreds of apps on the marketplace. A few examples would be JDate, Asian Date, Teaching Dating, and Lesbian Dating. Generally, people using these apps are mixed, either looking at finding Mr. Right by knowing exactly what type of person they want and cutting through the clutter by targeting the correct audience, such as users on JDate, which is made for Jewish people seeking other Jewish people, or they often can be after a certain sexual experience with a certain type of person and not interested in an actual relationship, such as a cougar dating, for example, where older women sleep with younger men. A group of apps are categorized as niche apps, which are defined as apps that link people together who share common interests, whether that be going to the movies or having sex with a stranger. These apps often use GPS location to match people who I live in, a preset prox proximity of each other, and often tap into external size data such as Facebook to match people who have mutual friends and potentially share common interests. These specialized apps are generally used by younger demographics and are targeted at those looking for a quick fling rather than a serious committed relationship. Sites such as Grindr, Tinder, Anonymous, and Gator are all examples of niche apps. The niche market is responsible for the massive inflation of the dating app market amongst teens in which, according to eMerchant.com, apps like Tinder are the reason for the massive rise in popularity of online dating, as 22% of young people admit to using the app. The fourth category, non-specific dating apps are defined as having features that are used for online dating, yet not set up directly or purposefully for online dating. Let's face it, basically if you've flirted or sent a photo or a video of a sexual nature to a boy or girl online, by mobile, you have engaged in a form of mobile online dating. It is a common practice amongst younger demographics to engage in such practices with potential of current partners on apps like Facebook, Snapchat, Skype, and Chat Roulette. The dating world with the development of mobile dating apps is completely different these days to how it was even as little as 10 years ago. The traditional and modest views our grandparents held on dating have completely been thrown out the window. We must acknowledge, though, that the online dating apps give those who don't have time or confidence or the know-how the chance to find love or the chance to find a sexual relationship that they would not find otherwise, which is important as it levels out the playing field and gives those who normally slip between the cracks a chance. Not a flawless system. And there are many risks involved with meeting strangers you meet online, as well as fraud and stolen information being used all the time. Despite its flaws, there are many more advantages and many more people have become happy in living their lives in a more meaningful way due to the development of our online dating apps. So in conclusion, I think that it has be definitely been an advantageous development in our society.